Hi, I've had many people ask me to investigate the claims of this uh, solar-powered electric car, the Lightyear, which is um, either it's been released or released shortly. Watch the world's global premiere of the world's first solar car, the first solar-powered car, the Lightyear Zero. Check it out. Isn't it nice? It looks pretty funky. And this is a question people ask all the time. Why don't EVs just have solar panels on the roof? And, well, is it viable to actually power a practical everyday electric car via solar panels just on their roof and the interesting thing is i actually drive a solar powered car so i can tell you and we can run the numbers on this one so some of the claims are drive for months without charging charges itself whenever roof absorbs the light charging becomes a journey not a destination well i suspect that the journey is going to be parking this thing <laughs> instead of driving it Positive change for the planet, blah, blah, blah. Charges anywhere and takes you everywhere, regardless of electrical infrastructure. Our cars are built for grid independence. Built for grid independence. So from all this, they're starting to sort of imply that, you know, under certain circumstances, this car will just, like, charge itself all the time or at least they're giving you the impression that you'll get a lot of extra range out of this thing in fact they tell you here a thousand kilometer range between plug-in charging moments we have a new industry term charging moments what does that mean driving range will vary depending on driving habits location and season a thousand kilometer range based on 50 kilometer daily commute in Amsterdam during summer the netherlands <laughs> the nether regions so a you've got to be driving this car during summertime with peak uh, solar irradiance b you've got to only drive 50 kilometers a day uh in order to get this like a thousand kilometer range stuff and uh c you've got to have absolutely perfect skies with no obstacles no trees no buildings no lamps post casting shadows across your solar panels because they they don't tell you how any of these solar panels work with shading at all there's no data on that whatsoever so you've got to assume that you know if you get any sort of shading over these things the performance is going to drop fairly drastically and you'll notice it's got solar panels on the bonnet here on the roof and on the boot here and of course if the sun's over here like this um the bonnet is going to be shadowed by the rest of the car and likewise if the sun's over here uh, this back part is going to be pract get practically zero out of it so this is a totally non-optimal shape but we've got enough data here we can do real world calculations with five square meters of patented double curved solar array panels freedom to move anywhere it's built like no other electric car, charging on the go and gaining up to 70 kilometers of range per day from the sun alone. So that is one of their banner specifications. We can test this. Our solar cells can add up to 70 kilometers of driving range per day directly from the sun. Now, for those who don't know, I actually drive a fully solar power car, or at least I try to. I have a 2020 Hyundai Ionic electric car, which, by the way, has the same or better uh, efficiency in terms of uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers than this uh, light year. But I installed a My Energy Zappy here, which is a uh, solar EV charger tracker. You can get other uh, brands on the market as well. I'll link in the video. Now, I've got an 8 kilowatt solar array on my uh, roof, and uh, any X excess energy from that solar array minus anything my house takes you can see that it puts that energy into uh, the car during the day so we actually have an ideal lifestyle for uh, a solar powered car like this we have a huge solar array on the roof we've got a solar uh, tracking EV charger like this and we just we can just leave the car there plugged in during the day which we do and then if the Sun comes out we can uh, suck any excess energy from the solar that our house isn't taking and pump it in the car you can see that we're pumping in 6.1 one kilowatts here and it yes it does drop drastically in winter and we'll look at the data on that and you can see that we're pulling no energy from the grid at all so yeah i actually already drive a fully solar powered electric car or at least i try to now here's the thing even with an eight kilowatt solar array eight kilowatts which is an order of magnitude larger well actually technically eight 
times the surface area of the five square meters here. I've got 40 square meter uh, solar array on my roof. We've got the specifications here, but we actually uh, have a similar scenario to this. We actually only drive about 25 to 30 kilometers per day. Um, on average, we can, you know, if we've got extra tasks, we can uh, we use a bit there, we use a bit more extra on the weekend, but they actually base their data on a 50 kilometer workday commute in Amsterdam in summertime and a 35 kilometer workday commute in southern, southern Spain in spring and summer. So we actually already drive a solar power car like this with the same efficiency as this Lightyear car, which is, by the way, uh, it's got a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack 625 kilometer uh, range like this a nominal uh, range then it's about 10.5 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. My Ionic can actually get as low as 10 uh, just around town like this. And if you don't know, EVs are actually uh, best in stop-start uh, traffic. They're actually not very efficient at all if you drive them long distances down the motorway at high speed. Um, so, which is why this 625 kilometer uh, range, well, they claim it drops to 560. That's pretty good, but this has a better drag uh, coefficient. This has a 0.19 drag coefficient compared to my 2020 Ionic, which has uh, 0.24. But I've measured it and the efficiency drops fairly drastically, like 25% loss in range if you're just hauling it down the highway all day. So as somebody who already drives a solar power car, basically equivalent uh, to this in efficiency using uh, the same uh, like daily routine that they're uh, targeting here in their marketing campaign, we can't actually do 100% solar power because, shock horror, the sun doesn't come out all the time, even here in Sydney, Australia, with an array that is eight times the surface area of this one. Eight times times and we find that we probably can get away with 80 maybe 90 percent uh of our usage coming from solar other times we just have to charge it from the grid because we might have had a, like a spate of bad weather sometimes we can go an entire week without getting much if any usable energy at all from the thing it, sure this might be a bit better because ours uh trips out at 1.2 kilowatts it won't let us charge under that but this one might be better a little bit better in that regard but no <laughs> remember my eight times the surface area of the solar array of this one and I'm telling you as a solar power car owner I can't drive a hundred percent solar powered EV even with eight times the surface area so I can tell you right off the bat no solar powered electric cars are not viable at best they're a supplemental uh, technology and it's very nice I think all solar you know EVs should have like built-in solar panels like this but it's gonna cost a lot extra how much extra oh boy all right, let's order one of these light year zeros. We, we don't want regular silver like this. Nah, look at this. With the EV blog, we want matte metallic copper for an extra 5,000 euros. But look at this. 255,000 euros. This is a quarter of a million euros for this thing. This would want to be one luxury ass car. Let me tell you, for a quarter of a million euros. This is insane. Obviously, oh well, it does have a vegan interior, so, you know. Anyway, no, obviously, obviously you are paying for, uh, well, not only that they're like a startup, they don't make many of these, uh, to be fair, but still, really, you're paying for <laughs> the wake factor of being able to tell your friends that you drive a solar-powered electric car. And check it out, we can get the aero cover on the back as well. It gives you an add, an extra 12 kilometers free range per battery charge. Um, Yeah, that's less than 2% extra range. Like old school EVs, like they have these aero covers, kind of looks like futuristic, you know? But anyway, you are paying for the fact that this thing is solar powered. So how much solar panel does this thing got? Well, I'm glad you asked. We know it's five square meters. We can actually get, uh, let's go to the data sheet of sort of like highest output uh, residential panels on the market. It's a 400 watt jobby here, 22.6% uh, efficient. It's a 400 watt panel that will be at a thousand watts per square meter solar irradiance. And yep, here it is down here, thousand watts per square meter irradiance. That's the standard here. We can get slightly better than that here in Sydney during summertime but as I'll show you in a minute the output uh, drops like it can halve in the middle of winter it's not great turns out to have a square meter of 1.76 so we can factor that for 400 and that gives us 1185 watts for this light year that's absolute maximum 
solar output from this under ideal conditions not counting you know the shape of the thing like you, you're never going to get this okay it's more likely to be like one kilowatt uh maximum solar output of this thing and it's not going to be as efficient as uh one of these things because trust me if it was if it if that was the reason that this thing's so expensive that it uses the world's most efficient solar panels they'd be bragging about it until the cows come home but their marketing doesn't so you know it's probably not even going to be as efficient as a regular residential panel but a good ballpark engineering assumption for this back of the envelope stuff right if you're not knocking off at least 25 percent just based on the shape of the car, then you're not even in the game. Like it's going to help, but with five square meters of solar panel, like you're not even gonna get close to this sort of stuff. Trust me, I drive a solar power car in Sydney under ideal with a huge solar array and I still can't do it. <laughs> I, I've got to classify this as a helpful gimmick, but I, I you know, it, it's not worth a quarter of a million bucks helpful. So let's do it for winter time here, uh, in June, which is June here in Australia. The gold here is my production. So you're assuming you leave the car there for the entire day, okay? And we're even gonna be incredibly generous and totally ignore the shape of this thing. So any losses due to the shape, we're just gonna assume it's as good as the solar array on my roof, which it won't be, but if we can bust it with absolutely perfect assumptions, then in practice, it's gonna even be more busted. So we need to scale this down to the light year because it's eight times are uh, smaller we did that based on the uh, square area i've got about 40 square meters of uh, solar panels on my roof whereas the light year one is only five square meters so once again i think it's actually less than that because of the shape of the car and everything else right there's losses there it, it's simply if you've got a shape like that if you've got sun coming from here you're not getting much over here and vice versa right so divide 20 by 8 that's two and a half kilowatt hours per day so divide that 2.5 kilowatt hours uh, divided by uh, the efficiency, 10.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, you get an answer of 23.8 kilometers extra range per day. 23 kilometers per day. That's nowhere near the 70 that they claim. But this is winter time. Let's do summer. Now, it's actually hard to get a figure uh, for January. It's all over the shop because we had really bad uh, weather um, early this year. But look, you can see that it peaks around 40 kilowatt hours produced. So I'm going to run with 40. Once again, we're going to take absolute best case figures. There's no cloud whatsoever. But you can see how like a cloudy day can easily halve it. Well, more than halve it, right? We're down like 14 kilowatt hours instead of 40. But we'll run with 40. This ain't looking good for light years claims. Let me tell you, 40 kilowatt hours uh, per day, uh, scale it down to the size of the light year. So divided by that eight, that gives us five kilowatt hours uh, per day. And if you divide that by the 10.5 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, you're only getting 47 kilometers a day extra for this magical solar power car, which they claim our solar cells can add up to 70 kilometers of driving range per day directly from the sun. No, it won't. I don't know where they're getting that figure from unless they're using much more efficient cells than you know the best ones that you can get for your residential roof that we looked at there. There's no way that you can say that a solar panel that's shaped like this car is, is better than my rooftop. You know, I don't have an ideal angle, but at least it's like angled like towards the sun it's a like it's a proper residential solar array if i had this thing in my driveway and there was no shading at all it was absolutely perfect um no i only get even in summertime here in sydney australia we're famous for our sun on a good day we'd still only get an extra range of 47 kilowatt hours that doesn't include any losses that's assuming that you know this is absolutely like as good as a residential rooftop array which it's not that uh 70 kilometer range claim nah don't believe it at all but having said that if you actually do only do 20 30 k's a day something like that and you have perfect conditions then this thing might be able to power itself for a significantly long time it's a nice supplemental technology but no like i wouldn't be quibbling over this if it wasn't a quarter of a million euros and hyped up put on the pedestal as this um you know solar powered 
EV. Like, they try to be realistic in their claims here by only saying up to 70Ks and stuff like that, extra range and 1,000 kilometers with plug-in charging moments and stuff like this. But no, no, clearly they're, you know, they're marketing this to people thinking that they're going to get a huge amount of extra range because it's solar. And you're not. The, the best you're going to get out of this, I reckon, it's, it's going to be under. It's going to be significantly under 50 kilometers of range per day. That's ideal conditions. And as somebody who drives a solar-powered EV in practice, I can tell you, yeah, there's not as much sun as you think. And if you don't believe me, 2022, the first perfect day I found was 20th of March. I'm here in Sydney, Australia. Sure, we've had a bad run of weather uh, lately, which hasn't been terrific, but here's a time lapse. So watch the scale over here. It's going to change. Here you go. We've got, look, right? So this is actually going backwards uh, in time from today's date when I'm uh, re recording this. And yeah, you might get the occasional perfect days where you'll get the perfect uh, curve like this, but it, like most days, you're going to get some sort of, you know, shading clouds are going to come in and out and all sorts of stuff and it, like this is under ideal conditions with the solar panels on my rooftop right this is not your car you're driving around everywhere you're driving past buildings and trees and all sorts of things um come on right no you're never going to get these perfect figures which they base their uh, you know 70 kilometers extra per day on these are just bs marketing numbers Check this out. I just realized that we actually have enough data in their marketing numbers on this uh, claim here that we can actually work out the efficiency of their solar panels at best. Remember, these are marketing numbers. They're always going to be the absolute best. And then you've got the main claim here, drive for months without charging. I mean, you know, that's the banner claim it's like yeah nah no solar powered cars are not going to be a thing no this thing's not going to be revolutionary in practice you're going to find that it's meh it's kind of nice to know that you're charging it during the day but if you've got a house like mine with solar power you're better off just installing a like a zappy or equivalent thing like i've got and then powering it for your excess solar during the day or uh, simply um you know if you're at a company they should install huge solar panels over the parking lots and then everyone can just plug in you know, your regular charger and boom you know um you, you get free power that way that'd be absolutely fantastic but putting five square meters of solar panel on the non-optimal where, where, where they even the car shades itself <laughs> like no come on and that's my conclusion for the light year one the world's first solar powered production car like looks like it's going to come out it's sexy people will buy it because people have got money you know a quarter of a million euros good on you but uh yeah Nah. So there's two questions here. Are solar powered electric cars like a viable thing? Can you actually, do they give you any decent increase in range or can you potentially use them as solar power only? From someone who owns one with uh, an eight times bigger solar panel, no, not really. These are, as I said, supplemental only uh, technology and it's very nice. I think every EV should actually have uh, solar panels integrated like this, you know, barring the integration uh, cost and stuff like that. Look, you can only get five square meters. You can't do it. You cannot beat the laws of physics, Captain. Okay, you're not going to suddenly, even if you had double or triple the amount of efficiency in your solar cells, you're still not there. I'm eight times the size of this and I, I still can't get 100% solar usage so no solar powered cars are not viable it's just supplemental tech as for this uh, light year one um, it's claims are yeah typical marketing wankery and you're not going to get this 70 kilometers per day you're not going to get that in practice it's just not going to happen and even if you did it's not a huge amount anyway so like uh, no so no, it's just marketing, marketing, marketing. It's a very nice car, but come on, the price of this thing, they are really taking the piss at 267,000 US dollars. And uh, by the way, thanks to one of my viewers, uh, Bob C, he mentioned the uh, Aptera um, here, and I will do an extended uh, version of this video, by the way, on my second channel and on my Odyssey channel as well. It'll have some extra uh, technical detail on the Lightyear and also a uh, quick overview of this Aptera. But this is one tenth 
the price of the light year. This is from $26,000. And the efficiency of this thing is not a huge amount greater. It's only 40% better than my Hyundai Ionic. But even with this whiz -bang tech here, um, yeah, you're still not going to be driving around in a solar powered car all day, every day. And as for uh, integrating the cost of uh, solar panels into something like this, well, you know, I can imagine that, yeah, it does actually cost a lot. But, you yeah, know, the $260,000, they are just taking the piss. So, yes, you might start seeing more um, solar panel integration uh, just for really marketing um, and it's just nice to be able to think that you're getting you know a lot of extra range but in practice no it's just a supplemental kind of stuff eh, it's a shame but you know can a bit of laws of physics captain yeah nah is my official verdict anyway leave your thoughts and comments down below catch you next time <laughs>